and the Lord just impressed in my heart to share with us along this line because I believe that this is one of the graces that lifts the anointing that can take men to new dimensions it will only happen when you believe the Bible declares blessed is she that believes he said for unto her not unto them unto her there shall be a performance hallelujah thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side it's one thing for your greatness to be increased but how many of you know that every time you rise in this kingdom success listen carefully i'm teaching now success has a side effect both to those who pray and seek your good and to those who will react as a result when you study the subject of success every time a man rises um, you realize that rising in life is warfare are we together because as you rise your rising destroys the excuses of people who probably would have given a reason as to why men cannot rise or should not rise and so naturally the side effect is that there will be untold battles battles from family members battles from colleagues and contemporaries even battles from mentors and those that you seek direction from are we together now when people rise um, the accolades and the claps that you receive is not all there is to the process so you you need to be comforted on every side for your rising to give you value just because a man looks at his son and gives him the coat of many colors and he goes innocently to testify not before his enemies his brothers here's what daddy did for me the brothers say oh so we are here taking care of sheep and then he gives one person out of all of us and they said let's kill him brothers conspiring most times you may not know how hostile human beings are until results begin to speak in your life every time you look like them there is no basis for fighting and quarreling for as long as the house has not been built for as long as you are a general man of god with no unusual dimension of grace it's acceptable you are friends to everyone for as long as you are at a financial level that resonates with your co-tenants or resonates with your core people no one will fight you so you will be deceived into thinking the world is such a peaceful place welcome to a world where people fight successful people from the day you announced that God gave me a job, all of a sudden your food is no longer sweet. All of a sudden your cloth has a problem. All of a sudden your greeting becomes sarcasm. That's the side effect of success. And so it says, thou shall increase my greatness. But because with every increase there are battles, Lord, don't leave me alone. Comfort me on every side. Don't just increase my greatness and leave me because there are certain levels of battles that can come to your life you will wish you never rose are we together have you seen people challenge you to a point that you say lord i i, I admire my yesterday i i didn't have money but i was peaceful i didn't have influence woe betide a man who rises without the help of god to sustain him there you will hate success hallelujah Thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me on every side. Comfort me on every side. And so it is God's desire from the time that I, I taught the lifter of men, the, the kinds of testimonies that have come already from that series, not just within the local environment of the ministry here, people whose lives have changed overnight and you know i taught us here that the anointing of the spirit is where his word is are we together not just his general word but his emphasis for a season are we together so if god is speaking as a healing god his anointing that will be present is the anointing to heal if god is speaking as a lifting god the anointing the anointing of the holy spirit will always be found where his word is 
if it looks like in a particular season you are not anointed or no longer as anointed as you want it may not be that you have backslidden it may have been that you have you have not found where the word is for the season because the word for the season is where the anointing for the season is that you were anointed yesterday does not mean that your anointing of yesterday will be relevant for today's challenge are we together god is in the business of lifting men and he's lifting us not just because um, we need to tell the world we are successful that's too small a reason to be lifted i told you that kingdom advance can only be possible under two conditions number one evangelism number two influence influence is important to enthrone christ within a sphere of human existence and so if we do not contend for influence if the only thing that happens to us is evangelism winning souls which is important and valuable then the church will not have a voice enough to institutionalize christ and his value system within society are we together it matters that the church not only has the word but have the voice to declare that word we must contend for the requisite level of influence that will make our words matter not only to fellow believers but to to every strata of human society business government media etc are you following me now so the subject of greatness is something that i want you to covet passionately we come from different backgrounds even christian backgrounds and some of us though well-meaning but have been erroneously indoctrinated into believing that any desire to want to rise to a position that is higher than than that which mediocrity affords is carnality and you shouldn't be interested in that let me tell you in the 21st century if you do not have a voice then there are certain things you cannot do for the kingdom are we together when it was time to bring a dream that will save the nation god searched around to look for who was from him and there was no believer who had the influence to do something about that dream so god had to make do with pharaoh god went to pharaoh and gave him the dream about the redemption of egypt and then god's people because pharaoh was the only one who had the requisite influence to do something about it are we together there are certain levels of visions and revelations that you will never see no matter how you fast and pray because you do not have the influence to do anything about it are we together if god shows you something about a family that requires some kind of financial capability to solve their needs if you do not have the financial wherewithal you can only intercede so god will not waste his time bringing you that kind of dream he will find someone who has opened himself to that possibility in the kingdom and grant him access to that revelation because in seeing it he also has the ability to do something about it are we together it will no longer be that the church will buy a plot of land or plots of land and then the government will arise and seize it simply because everyone is in the church is spiritual anointed but with no voice jesus remained on the cross no influence could bring him down but a man called joseph of arimathea the bible called him a noble man he had both the political and financial power he went to caesar and demanded that jesus be brought down where would you keep him caesar said and he said no i have a virgin tomb and they took jesus and buried him there influence played a role in the salvation of our souls are we together now it matters that we rise to positions of kingdom influence thou shall increase give us that scripture please thou shall increase my greatness and comfort me round about why for the sake of your kingdom 
why for the sake of your glory for the sake of the advancement of your purposes thou shall increase my finances and comfort me round about thou shall increase the anointing upon my life and comfort me round about thou shall increase my sphere of influence thou shall increase my strategic alliances thou shall increase my voice thou shall increase the capacity my mind everything that needs to be increased should be increased in this season are we blessed and comfort me round about there are people here you are here seated many of the prayer requests that you are going to be submitting requires influence for it to be answered it doesn't just require god a man can answer that prayer are we together influence all you need is for someone to talk to someone to advocate for someone on your behalf and that whole prayer point that is giving you headache is solved in a moment it's amazing how influence can represent christ in a moment in a twinkling of an eye a challenge that has held a family a nation a territory just within a moment greatness is powerful you will never be able to legislate on behalf of the kingdom if you do not contend for certain dimensions of greatness and influence hallelujah this is a very powerful scripture that should be your prayer request in this season there are pastors who are anointed they love god they have revelation but they have rejected kingdom influence and it has pegged them down peg their ministries peg everything about them let me tell you something about followership nobody wants to follow a man who is not growing nobody wants to follow a man who is not rising are we together now yes For as long as we continue to celebrate mediocrity, for as long as we continue to allow ourselves to be, um, the Bible says, they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. For as long as we remain at the lowest levels in life, let me tell you this, we may keep feeling spiritual, but there is very little God will be able to do with us. It's true. When you increase in greatness, you give God space to find expression in and through you. In this season, God is passionately finding men who will embody influence with a heart for him. So that he will be able to win people. Winning people one by one will not get the job done. We need to win territories through influence. Are we together now? Yes. Islam is one of the fastest growing religion in Europe and you will never see any city-wide crusade you will never see any venue being rented for any conference they are using one key everybody say influence because when a man is hungry you don't give him a bible when a man is hungry you put the gospel on a plate of a loaf of bread and give it to him that's the only way he can eat that he can receive it are we together You've heard me say it again and again. By the grace of God, I will never pastor a people who are spiritual but not influential. Both can go hand in hand. Now, every time you are doing things that are new or out of the box, you will be misunderstood because society is full of status quo. And most of those, those systems are largely founded upon mediocrity. The average believer does not understand how the kingdom should be advanced. They know how you should grow. They know how you should rise. They know how your spirit man should be strong. But they don't know how the purposes of God should be institutionalized within a territory. The subject of kingdom advance is seldom understood by many people. Very few people. I tell you this with, with, with no sense of... of um, criticism or whatever but even among us men of god there are very few people who understand kingdom advance we understand spiritual growth we understand the issues that concern our growth and character and so on and so forth but the issues that have to institutionalize christ so that 30 years after now our children will still be rooted in the things of god we hardly have that understanding 
and living in the 21st century has shifted things we must learn how to shift we must learn how to be strategic in our approach hallelujah the message remains the same but the communication must be strategic enough to be able to represent christ are we blessed thou shall increase my greatness before I continue, I just feel we should pray this prayer in one minute. I don't know what area. Listen, greatness is a summation of excellence in many facets of your life. Some of us may be doing well in one area, may be doing well in another area. Find the area where you know you cannot say you are experiencing greatness in. And in one minute, cry to God and say, Lord, visit me in this area. Go ahead. Pray with all your heart. Lord, you have granted me access to revelations. I thank you. Step in over my finances. Lord, you have helped me in the area of my finances, but my spiritual life is crushing to pieces. Grant me grace. You have granted me access to revelations, but my mind, my mind is barren. I need a miracle in my mind. Increase my capacity, understanding. make sure you are praying this is the miracle service many of the challenges that we have in our lives are dependent on these things whether you are standing whether you are at the window whether you are everywhere following online just go ahead and connect don't allow the little inconveniences to distract you it's a very serious prayer everyone that asketh receiveth lord increase my greatness increase my greatness comfort me increase my greatness for the sake of my family members increase my greatness for the sake of the gospel increase my greatness for the sake of the ministry the church you have committed increase my greatness for the sake of the lost souls millions billions of them increase my greatness for the sake of having your purposes preserved within a territory hallelujah praise the lord are we blessed let me just talk about one key there are many but for tonight just to add to what i've shared just one key that can help us grow in greatness greatness is a system remember that the kingdom of god operates on mysteries and systems say after me mysteries say after me systems the kingdom of god is systemic god never does the same thing twice when he does a thing once he creates a system around it for continuity are we together he never created the plants and the animals twice he did it once and put a seed in it for reproduction he made one man one woman never to make another one again are we together there is a system so if your life is to excel it must be built on systems if your life is built on miracles as much as you are going to receive them miracles are a sign that something went wrong and the sovereignty of god is intervening to correct we were never designed to live off miracles listen very carefully if you live off miracles you will live a frustrated life we live off principles we live off the systems of the kingdom the systems of god create predictability they are an attestation to his justice the bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations of his throne never mistake a miracle to mean that's how god wants it to continue a miracle is a stepping in of god to correct something that shouldn't be you are working properly when your life is systemic are we together first corinthians chapter 4 please give us verse 1 and verse 2 let's talk about just one key here faithfulness say after me faithfulness second corinthians chapter 4 it says let a man so account of us as of the ministers of christ paul is speaking now and stewards paul uses a very interesting language not not owners he calls them stewards the word steward is the word caretaker caretakers of the mysteries of god number two he says moreover it is required in stewards 
if it is true that you are a steward there is a requirement and it says moreover it is required in stewards that a man whoever says he is a steward must exhibit a character called faithfulness faithfulness he says must be found faithful there are many people who may never rise beyond their current levels of influence their current financial level their levels of the anointing of revelation because they have other things but they lack this quality faithfulness in the kingdom you grow it looks simple but write it in the kingdom you grow and jesus grew in wisdom jesus grew in stature jesus grew in favor with god and with men we live in a time where we admire people's results every time we see uncommon results whether in the area of the anointing the demonstration of the spirit revelations influence etc every time we see that people are stepping into unusual levels of grace we don't admire the process we rather admire the results hallelujah i see people come to me and i know they are well-meaning and they just kneel down and say sir double portion of your anointing and i said look, look at what this guy is asking are we together it looks like a very that's why some of you came here probably to get a double portion the mother of james and john came to jesus and said jesus i have a request on behalf of my two sons you've been seeing them you've, you've you see how faithful they have been in your ministry would you grant because the way you are going you are going to overthrow caesar would you grant that when all is said and done let my kids sit at your left and right and jesus looked at her he never said it's an impossible request he said can you drink of my cup and be baptized with my baptism two things one works internally the other one works externally but both must happen to qualify you the seat is vacant but can you drink this one is not a gift it's a reward are we together now one of the requirements is faithfulness there are pastors who will never rise beyond certain membership barrier because they are not faithful god gives you three members you look at them and feel they are not relevant at all are we together oh these members are not serious you are three all of you are broke none of you is smart none of you is working i'm the one who pays your transport what kind of useless membership is this and god is watching and then you admire another church with choice uh what do we call it choice membership this one is working in oil company i said these, these are the kind of members and we we have the effrontery to go back to the secret place and cry that god will find a way of drawing those people from that church to bring it to our church and god says look at this the kind of believers that are being produced within this region no understanding it is required in stewards in men of god in business people in young people in students in whatever dimension of life that you be faithful listen very carefully be faithful be faithful never follow a man who does not have a track record of growth you are only wasting your time no matter how flamboyant the results are is a mirage anybody who stumbles into financial prosperity is joking is joking i repeat is joking anybody who just stumbles into the anointing is still joking anybody who stumbles into revelation is joking there must be a track record in life your track record is what gives value to your current stature faithfulness here's what jesus has to say about this luke chapter 16 please give us verse 10 to 12 jesus is teaching here luke chapter 16 10 to 12 it says he that is faithful listen now jesus is teaching here it was the the parable of of the unjust servant whose master was about to banish him and he went to reduce the bills for several people so that when he was banished 
he would now rush to them and jesus is using the opportunity to teach us something here that he that is faithful in that which is least is what he didn't say will be is already i can know whether you qualify for your next level in life by what you are doing with the current level is faithful also in much and he that is unjust please go back to verse 10 he that is unjust in the least is also unjust in much next verse 11 if therefore ye have not been faithful he's speaking in the context of resources now in unrighteous mammon your naira and cobble he says who will commit to you the true riches you know what the true riches are things that money cannot buy but can buy money true riches money itself is a commodity there is something that buys it true riches are you getting what i'm saying now in our world today if you have money you can buy everything but god is saying that money itself like you sell phones money is a product too there is something that can buy it it's called true riches so when god tests you let me tell you what this is saying let me use um let me bring out a thousand naira look at this this is one thousand naira do you know god can arrange favor compass of Femi. i can see him already warming up to be a very can i mean look at the see how sharp he's looking praise the lord now watch this do you know that in your walk with god a time can come god can just open a door for you hundred thousand comes you are not rich this is unrighteous mammon he's testing you you are rich when he gives you what can buy this you are not rich if you have this this, this is nonsense anything can happen set this on fire you can't pack the ashes to court and say this was one thousand true riches is what can buy this product not shoe buy this this one so he's watching you and he gives you this and you are not faithful in it you misuse it you waste it the kingdom does not benefit from it he says no there is an anointing i can give you that will bring this you have not qualified i tested you with this and you failed are we together god can bring a relationship come god can bring a relationship to your life that you know you didn't even qualify for it is a test you misuse that relationship you take advantage of the people and you don't even max you don't value them and then all of a sudden you cannot be given the true riches that can buy greater relationships faithfulness is a powerful spiritual quality powerful spiritual quality many people are not faithful that's why they pray they fast oh god dry fast seven days 40 days lord give me more anointing give me this give me that and then one day god leads you to one old woman and god says take care of this woman your destiny is to walk in the healing ministry but he won't start by giving you the healing anointing he will start by creating compassion in you take care of this old woman and you say oh god this old woman how much will i get from this woman i need something that i will shine so that from that shining to be on youtube and then it will be on all the social media platforms and up i go and god says you see that there's no faithfulness and while that is happening god is watching one young lady somewhere taking care of the woman mama are you okay and she's she's writing her promotion exams through faithfulness she may not know but she's walking herself to a realm of the anointing one day she'll finish taking care of that woman and say father thank you for the privilege my mother was never alive for me to be able to take care of her but thank you for giving me such an old woman and the heavens are open over that young lady a strange anointing comes upon her two years later that lady is walking in a dimension of the healing anointing that nobody can explain and people criticize where did this girl come from from nowhere i've told you there's nobody that comes out from nowhere that you are not aware of the training does not mean they were not trained 
there is no body that comes out of nowhere it's a lie when you are in the cave of adulam it's a lonely place when you manifest people say aha this person is lucky no there's no luck in this thing is god speaking to us many of us god trusted us with finances we were not faithful many of us today if i tell you lift your prayer request now you will see prayer point one breakthrough prayer point two financial rest prayer point three financial favor it's still the same thing you are writing just different versions so that however god wants to answer it it should just answer it are we together lord increase in membership did you know while i was praying i was already set to come the rain started all i was doing i i found tears coming out of my eyes because i was thinking i said my god my god this these people now how 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 do we manage these people but many of you ah, they've come let them come you know you are the superstar when you think like that you will never rise don't forget that men may not know while you are looking at this but there is a god who has the all-seeing eye that looks at you and knows that this man of god should not rise are we together many of us want resources as i've lifted this one thousand now many of you have been looking at it you are not even hearing me again listen you are not faithful if you are faithful is proof that you are a steward can god give you this and say let me have it back and you say lord it's yours it's proof of faithfulness lord after all it came from you i i you took me from nowhere soaking gary if you have given me this if you make a demand it goes there are many of you once your hands hold it it's only a need a secular need that will release it the voice of god has no right to make you release this and then you want lots of it and we keep joking that we are having dreams and seeing god is not stupid this system is very orderly once your heart is not with god you won't find anything are we together i've shared this story here once upon a time in this area then nobody knew me nobody i was invited to go and minister somewhere and just like it rained very heavily tonight i had prepared fasted prepared to go there and then the rain started and the people were expecting me and that time there was no protocol to come put umbrella etc all of these formalities that was how i i rolled my sleeves rolled my trouser and held my bible i started praying in tongues in the rain lord don't mind me being soaked just bless your people if your people are blessed i am satisfied are we together now i remember going there and then to make matters worse the church didn't even make arrangement for umbrella to receive me it was then steve strings who saw me from outside and collected he was also invited he collected an umbrella to run go and receive me outside when i came in they asked me to wait they had to shift some people in front to create space for me to come and sit down it looked painful it looked ego stinging but it was a test of faithfulness can you be faithful even when your reputation is being insulted not everybody will insult your reputation keep forbearing with those who don't value you then you will qualify for those who can value you there are some of you today you will go to minister somewhere they will disrespect you some of you are intelligent business people surrounded by those who have no value keep at what you are doing you will come to a point where god will bring you to people who can recognize the grace you carry and my goodness happy are you when you enter that season in your life where you are surrounded by those who have a recognition of what you carry and will be willing to bless my life was not always like this this ministry was not always like this the first crusade you see crowds everywhere and we're happy many of you who follow me on facebook or follow follow the ministry uh, on facebook and follow what we are doing and you know all the crowds and the things that happen when every time i travel 
many people just see it and think it's just because he's anointed it's not just because i'm anointed with all humility what you are seeing is a product of many years of faithfulness i've shared with you our first crusade it never you see the secrets of men are in their stories don't just hear the story discern the message are we together i told you about our first crusade i think we're about 20 or so the entire crusade ground i'm not sure we're up to 50 the first crusade we prayed fasted organized when it was time to pray for the sick the whole team had the opportunity one on one it was a test of faithfulness many of us do not want to start small as a student you want to wear the same cloth with a bank manager and so you open your gate wide for a devourer to come and rubbish your life and keep punishing you are we together there are men of god who start in ministry everybody they see is their colleague take it easy move gradually no i'm anointed if not because of condition don't i have a better revelation than kenny and god keeps you there say stay there i just caught a new revelation there's nobody to hear you because there is no track record you can look at a pastor who doesn't seem to have any serious revelation and wonder why god keeps him there faithfulness all he may say is god bless you god lift you god anoint you and then you are there in your pride and arrogance i just finished pieces in the book of ephesians and you will remain there for many years is god speaking to us never be ashamed of the track record of faithfulness lord this is the level of grace that you have given me i am happy i am proud of it lord you have given me the anointing to clean chairs i know that you have called me to be an apostle to the nations but in this season my assignment is to clean chairs i receive the grace to do it faithfully not just to clean chairs and say kai oh god if not just people me cleaning chairs and god says that's it you see that and you'll never rise everybody say faithfulness say it again faithfulness matthew chapter 25 we're going to read three verses 21 23 and 29 thank you matthew 25 we're reading 21 23 and we're reading 29 i just want to show you something and then we'll begin to pray this was the parable of the talents five two and one talent and this to the one who had five his lord said unto him after being faithful he said well done good and what faithful servant thou hast been faithful over a few things let me show you how greatness happens in the kingdom thou hast been faithful over a few things what's your reward i will make thee ruler over many things when you are promoted in the kingdom many things happen to you one the anointing upon your life is multiplied number two your operation becomes easy number three god expands your self-influence to cause more people to hear your voice is a product of faithfulness you have been faithful over a few things i gave you a teaching anointing and i did not give you an anointing for miracles and you were not ashamed to teach the people as best as you knew to every time they ask you man of god why is it that we don't see miracles in your life be patient i'm coming i'm not ashamed to say god is bringing me there for now is the teaching grace he has given me i will teach i will make bible study notes and god is saying this is a man who will not only be a good shepherd he will be a good manager of my anointing and one day that man comes to a meeting and all of a sudden an impartation comes upon him the dimension that has been absent is now supplied by the spirit he goes back not just as a teacher but as a worker of miracles 23 to the man with the two talents he said his lord said unto him well done good and faithful servant same thing thou has been faithful over a few things so it's not the size of what you were given the same commendation i will make thee ruler over many things let's go to 29 29 for unto everyone that hath this is a mystery in the kingdom that when you have is a sign that you were a good manager and the reward is that he shall have what 
abundance of anything abundance here doesn't just talk of finance abundance of the anointing abundance of influence abundance of access to revelations and then it says but from him that hath and is not faithful now he says even that which he had shall be taken away it is not only satan that takes things away god too takes things away are we together now not every reduction is caused by demons there are reductions that are a testimony it's a report card from god to you that something is wrong with your stewardship when god increases you members rise today and mysteriously members just go down sometimes it could be that it's a message from god that i trusted you with 30 people and i observed your stewardship your stewardship does not merit multiplication you rise in finances and then sometimes you just go down never to rise again it could be a message that you need to upgrade on your stewardship you rise in influence and all of a sudden you find out within a season all your helpers are no longer there all the people whose voice who who listen to your voice and acknowledge your voice are no longer there it could be a sign that you are abusing the privilege of stewardship are we together the prayer that you need to pray in this season is for God to help you that whilst you are waiting for a supply of greater dimensions of his grace but that he grants you the fortitude to be faithful if God gives you 10 naira be faithful if God gives you one shoe polish it don't sit down running your eyes on every shoe and say don't worry except God is not my God I'm coming and and that shoe will say you are not coming this is not how to get me you get me by washing the one you have it's a rubber shoe wash it it's a 200 naira trouser wash it are we together now we live in a society that applauds people for living a fake life that claps for people for jumping seasons and as soon as they clap for you and as frequent as they clap for you that's the same way they will clap against you because every time you jump up you must go down but when you grow up you remain up the difference between jumping and growing is that you are still connected to your root when you jump you are suspended nothing backs you no support so you must come down when you grow up the tallest building in the world is still connected to the earth that's why it stands nothing suspended has an a, a, the ability to stay indefinitely when they send satellites to orbit the earth and orbit other planets and all of that after a time requirement because they are not connected to the earth they must be sent back planes don't fly indefinitely in the sky they get to a point where they must make contact with the earth again for some of you here this is your miracle service tonight the lord is speaking to you you are living a fake life go back to the basics let me tell you this don't ever generalize success just because everybody around you is successful does not mean you are successful go back and learn the principles corporate success is deception are you hearing what i'm saying now we are all successful a day will come life will separate you and you stand as an individual and it will be a test of your values whether or not it's like a defense the way students do defense you will need to defend and validate your success any door god has not opened for me i'm not under pressure to go because when he opens it he will open it in honor do you know if god does not open a door your tenacity can force that door to open that you forced a door and it opened a man can go around with complimentary cards i'm a man of god i'm a gospel artist in fact you've not had anything like you just invite me and watch what happens 
you can go around and out of the 1000 invitations you beg for you may get one or two or three or four and you call it increase you see when you open the door by yourself you have to keep it open by yourself but when god opens it god when he opens it he keeps it by his own hand the hands that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be afraid there is a hand that lifted me will uphold me to the end i will not be hallelujah Years ago, I had a conversation. We we're about to pray with a gentleman, and he asked me a very honest question. He said, Apostle, I've come for Koinonia and I've seen the crowds of people. And he asked a question. He said, Can you reproduce these results? And I said, That's not me to answer. You are asking time, not me. Keep watching. And I think two weeks ago, he sent me a text. You know, just joking. I'm, I'm just saying it. And he's just sent a text. And he said, Apostle, you are dangerous. I say, I'm not dangerous. The laws of God are dangerous. It is not me. It is the laws of God. Whoever will keep these truths, it will work for you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Even if you are afraid of yourself, trust his laws. And watch them shock you. And make a wonder out of your life. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. In a few minutes now, we're going to begin to pray. And many of you will stand and watch your life change as if it's magic. It is not just because a man who is anointed is standing before you. There is a system in the kingdom. We make our boast first in the Lord and then in the power of his might. His might, the power of his might, the power that is released when his laws operate those who don't understand will look at these things and think he's boasting it's not boasting it's true the predictability of god's principles hallelujah i challenge you today that much more than the miracles you are receiving you must trust god to go back and say lord teach me your ways we reign in this kingdom we're about to pray now i want to show you a very dangerous scripture that god opened my eyes to brothers and sisters if god does not open your eyes to see how a thing works you may never know do you know that in every challenge that you have right now a way of escape is there but it takes god to open your eyes psalm 77 turn there let me show you something psalm 77 and verse 19 psalm 77 verse 19 give us from amplified if it's possible lion of judah my trust is in you alpha and omega my trust is in you i am that i am my trust is in you tonight i put them on you my trust is in you it says your way in delivering your people was through the sea listen carefully the same sea that was an obstacle it said their way of escape was inside that water inside that trouble it says and your paths through the great waters how can you be in trouble and god says in that trouble that's where your answer is but it takes your eyes to see it god hides a formula in your pain and keeps it there until revelation opens you to it it says your way of delivering your people was through the sea the same sea he said that your path through the water yet you pass through it and cover it and nobody can trace your footsteps this one give us king james again it will take revelation for you to know how can i look at him water challenges and great waters he said thy way is in the sea 
in that rent challenge is a formula that can make you a landlord but it will take the spirit of revelation in that sickness that brought you to koinonia is hidden a mystery that can bring you into the healing anointing it says thy way is in the sea and thy path in the great waters and thy footsteps are not known god what kind of god are you you do something and cover it so no man can just look and say ah I, uh. but when he opens your eyes all of a sudden you will discover that so the water can part i never knew and all of a sudden there will be dry ground and you walk to it and the egyptians will think and god will cover it and say i don't open it for everybody it is a way but not for everybody are we together these are some of the deep mysteries about the anointing sometimes you see me give you instructions that don't make sense shout jesus keep quiet it does you will try it and it won't work it's a mystery there is a way in it there is a pathway that when god opens your eyes to the systems of the kingdom then you can see things that don't make sense and make wonders out of them god is speaking to someone here that the prayer you are praying the answer is already within your environment all it takes is for your eyes to see Hagar was punished by Sarah. The Bible says she was in the wilderness dying of test. The young lad cried to heaven. When an angel appeared, all of a sudden they saw an oasis bringing water. The water was there, but her eyes could not see. The ways of God. And let me tell you, this is why we come to, how, to the house of God. Because there is something about the corporate gathering of God. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Give us verse 13 of the same scripture. Go ahead and read. Thy ways, O God, where is it? Is found in your sanctuary. When we come here, it says in your sanctuary, in your house, you have, you have ordained a place that when we meet, you will show us a way. When God put this miracle service and call this ministry and put all of these things it's not just a ritual there is a mystery about the sanctuary he has ordained that every time you come before god he must open a way so don't carry your challenges and come and you are wondering and say i went to every church i don't know what the church you went to believe but in this sanctuary there is a way there is a way i dare to tell you there is a way man of god i have been in i've gone everywhere with all due respect i don't know where you went to but there is a way in the sanctuary solomon dedicated a place and said lord let me tie a covenant to this sanctuary if any man prays and turns this direction not for the sake of their faith for the covenant in this place answer them when they were about to kill daniel in the days of that of, of nebuchadnezzar daniel opened the gate and faced jerusalem he, he was afraid he couldn't depend on his faith he opened the door and said lord i engage the covenant that covenant that solomon made with the temple in jerusalem it is not only a man that can bring miracles a place can be anointed to birth miracles it was in a place that jacob went to sleep he never met a man but he met a place and that night the heavens were open and he saw a ladder that connected the heavens he said this is the house of god this is the gates of heaven tonight i want to stir up faith many of you have come you have made sacrifices pastor femi thank you thank you so so much praise the lord many of you have come from several places you have made sacrifices please don't come here wasting your time and don't come here wondering let's see what god will do already i can answer you you won't get anything already let me let me be honest with you because god is not a magician but there are people that come here determined and say lord i have seen you in this place i can't go back this way that something must shift in my life something must change in my life not all of you may be trusting god for sickness for healing you know but many of us are trusting god for one thing or the other i'd like you to believe 
there is a way in the sea i bring you a word there is a way this kingdom operates by mysteries the bible says there is no temptation given but that which is common to man you are not the first to have house rent issue you are not the first to have financial issues listen carefully you are not the first to have academic issues you are not the first to have excuse me spiritual issues you are not the first but though we are few we're surrounded by many who have crossed that river. That's a part of this song I like. Though we are few, there are witnesses. There are people who have been healed. There are people who God changed their lives overnight. There may not be many, but they are on earth, testifiers of His faithfulness. As a testament that if God did it before, he can do it again and this is the song we'll be singing forever oh is the lord oh is the lord listen it is our confidence in god and our confidence in his ways that gives us the audacity to gather people and say come he will change you without the presence of god and access to the ways of god we are we are scammers we are not we are not just liars we are scammers why do you gather people and tell them come we dare you to come we call a solemn assembly not only because we know god by the privilege of his grace we have found grace with him and he has made us stewards of the mysteries ephesians chapter 3 this will be the last scripture ephesians chapter 3 verse 2 from verse 2 it says if ye have heard paul is speaking of the dispensation of grace of the grace of god which is given me to you word for your sake how that by revelation verse 3 he made known unto me how did paul know it by revelation he made known unto me the mystery as i wrote afore in few words verse 4 whereby when you read another word is whereby when you experience it you may know the basis ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of christ verse 5 a mystery that has been hidden in other ages let me tell you some of the things we are doing although they are spiritual although they are biblical they are mysteries that have been hidden they are there the same way many people swam through the red sea although there was a way it took a generation of men to be open to that mystery there are many mysteries that control results that have not been routed by many but the bible says that in other ages was not made known to the sons of men as it is now revealed to his holy apostles and prophets how by the spirit by the spirit it was a revelation that god gave me that people write their requests and come and drop here it's not something that i copied from anywhere it's a revelation stupid though but look at the testimonies that have come out from it are we blessed now god's servant bishop david oyedeko was given the revelation of feet worship a revelation that had not been known to anybody people read it and all of a sudden the testimonies that come out of it people had communion people take communion in orthodox churches and different churches and just take it even while they are drunk but somebody came with a light about communion and all of a sudden people take communion now and cancers just die there are mysteries brothers and sisters there are many people that never knew that the house of god is powerful praise the lord are we together so you must understand that god in this season wants to shift you but he won't just shift you just by saying shift there are mysteries tonight i bring you a word 
there is a way in the sea hallelujah there is a way there is a way there is something god can do about your finances there's something god can do about your family situation you left fire on the mountain and came back you wait until the red sea parts and god will rubbish pharaoh tonight in your presence rise up on your feet begin to thank the lord for what you have heard tonight cry for the grace to be faithful go ahead cry for the grace to be faithful cry for the grace to be faithful lord grant me the grace to be faithful grant me the grace to stay as you lift me grant me the grace not to rush seasons in my life grant me the grace Grant me the grace. Hallelujah. Just pray one prayer. Lord, change my story. Visit me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Pray with faith. Change my story. Visit me. Visit me tonight. Hallelujah. Tonight is an unusual service because time has gone. We are going to be very, very fast. Very, very fast at that. Um, like I told us, we are going to start praying for the sick. We will start by praying for the sick. And um, now this is how we are going to do it. Because of, because of, those of you outside, don't worry. You don't worry. Wherever you are, you will be attended to. Are we together? You will be attended to so hold on before i ask the people to come you don't have to just cooperate with the ushers if they need you to do anything just just it's a temporary inconvenience we're doing this just to be able to manage time and to do all that we have to do hallelujah praise the lord now please hold on let's let's not be distracted those of us who are trusting God for healing is a miracle service. It's not just limited to healing, but we're going to pray for the sick now. Now, we're going to do this very fast. And um, please, those that will be ministering, let's, let's do it very fast. It's not in how long... Listen, let me tell you something about the anointing. It's not just in how long you are touched or the frequency. Just a touch is enough for the anointing. The same way a small drug can step into your body and that's it the wonders are done i'd like you to believe god to touch you change your life whether it's a blood disease whatever it is let's agree with you hallelujah we'll do that very very fast while we are doing that please um if you have come with your requests ushers um please help them pr department you can join them protocol let's just join and see how we can make this very fast so that at the same time we are collecting the prayer requests remember it's not a ritual um when it's time when they come to you you can hand over the request if you are yet to write yours you can quickly do that those online following us from whatever nation you can just connect your requests are already there and we're praying the power of god will touch it there too hallelujah praise the lord please i like you to be very intentional i know that most times we do this at the miracle services but be careful lest you make a ritual out of this and then at the same time waste your time i have seen the power and the glory of god um, upon my life and upon this ministry in in ways that that are humbling in ways that are powerful expect a testimony please refuse that you're not going back the way you came no matter what the medical situation is 
remember i told you there is a way in the sea there is a way hallelujah when i do that um we'll finish it and then we can now minister deliverance and just prophesy so that we are able to make time praise the lord father we're gathered tonight by your wisdom and your power lord we're about to minister to those who are sick and lord we trust your power to heal we trust your power to heal to the uttermost in the name of jesus anoint my hands anoint every man and woman of god who will be ministering to the sick let there be the hearing of faith let there be the walking of miracles do this and glorify yourself in the name of jesus christ praise the lord uh, father we give you all the praise let your power flow let miracles begin in this place we give you all the praise we give you all the honor in the name of jesus christ i pray amen please make sure that while you submit your prayer request be in the attitude of prayer if i were you i'll be praying in the spirit don't be distracted just because we are taking our time to pray for the sick god bless you Deserve the glory and the honor. So we lift our hearts and worship as we bless your holy name. Yes, you deserve the glory. the honor yes lord we lift our hands and worship as we praise your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great yes there is no one else There is no one else like you Yes, you are great And you do miracles so great Oh, there is no one else like you Oh, there is no one else like you saying you deserve the glory say you deserve the glory and the honor lord and the honor so we lift our hands so we lift our hands and words as we praise as we praise oh, 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 oh. yes you deserve the glory Why we worship tonight so we lift our hands and worship as we pray your holy name give you your the miracle there is no one no one else that can touch me like you do they can heal me say there is no one else 
Let every other name fade away The name of cancer, the name of HIV Let every other name fade away ha! The name of arthritis fades away Let every other name fade away ha! Jesus, take your place
the God. of Jesus shout it in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that every force from the pit of hell standing against my lifting tonight I challenge you lift your voice and begin to pray everyone Every force, every force, nothing will stop your lifting. This is a season of lifting in the name of Jesus. Set! Pray, pray! Every song shall be broken. You will have a big surprise. Say in the name of Jesus, every recurrent pattern in my life right now, I declare you destroyed. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Challenge every recurrent pattern by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Ha 
Ragata Barakato Sega de Venebo Abarato Sono de Manana Manana Seca Teca 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 Embra Catoto Topa Catoba Every recurrent pattern in the name of Jesus. Every recurrent pattern. Abu Sabala Katupa Shabren Negadea. In the name of Jesus. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Every dimension of grace apportioned for me tonight. I declare that I must step into it. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension of grace. Every dimension. Make sure you are praying every dimension. Every dimension, every dimension. Say in the name of Jesus, Father, let your fire fall upon my life, upon my family, and destroy every planting that is not of God. Lift your voice and pray. Let your fire. The visitation of your fire. The visitation of your fire upon my life. Upon my life. Pray. Shake it back at all back at Let your fire fall. Upon my life, let your fire bring a separation. Lift your hands. I'm about to pray for you now. We are never doing the same thing every time I rebuke devils. There are lives and destinies that are under the yokes of darkness. It's time for the devil to give up. Are we together? Are you ready to shout that name that is above all names? Let me tell you, I want you to be childlike tonight and just follow these instructions and watch the wonder working power of God in your life. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name Jesus everywhere. And as you shout that name, the sword of the Lord will pierce through every root of every challenge and begin to command victory for you are we together now especially for those of you who are coming here for the first time i'm ministering deliverance now every yoke of darkness that has tied anyone's life as you shout this name may the visitation of that fire are you ready now one two three I command the fire, the fire of the Spirit. Bring them up, the fire of the Holy Ghost. Right now, every altar and everything, every high thing that is not of God, I curse you now. I curse you now. I curse you now. hallelujah i think the ground is good enough you can bring them in the name of jesus i'm praying now i'm still praying anyone's destiny that is under siege 
right now i stretch my hands in the name of jesus i'm seeing i'm seeing like bolts of fire falling on people if it falls on you your destiny is opening up lord where are they i stretch my hands may the visitation of fire open destinies now shake it to katakata open destinies now open destinies now inside outside open destinies now open destinies now hallelujah i'm seeing a horn and i'm seeing fire burning it please be sensitive this is a symbol of authorities that sit over lives and families he said in Zechariah chapter 1 and verse 18, What seest thou? He said, Four horns. These are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Jerusalem, against Judah, so that no man does lift his head. He said, But I have sent four carpenters. Lift your heads. I'm praying right now. In the name of Jesus, the fire of God is falling on people inside and outside. In the name of Jesus, anyone here, Shabo Sekatos Kabariakata under any kind of demonic siege at the count of three that horn that symbol of authority that has tied your family that has tied your life it is uprooted one two three i release that fire now i release that fire now i release that fire now by the anointing of the holy ghost I decree and declare by the anointing of the Holy Ghost anyone here whose life is under siege be delivered now hallelujah the Lord wants to visit the issue of barrenness but then he's using physical barrenness as a prophetic symbol for productivity so that you are not surprised if you are a man and the anointing still visits you the womb is the place where seed is planted that womb can be anything a woman's womb is just a type and a shadow of a system of increase there are people a barren woman is a woman whose womb cannot receive and multiply seed the way it is physically that's how it is spiritually you receive the word but it never produces it's barrenness you receive finances but it never multiplies it's barrenness lift your hands as i pray listen many people many people are going to be delivered from just this prayer you will be surprised to know that many of your requests are tied to this one prayer lift your hands i'm praying now that in the name of jesus ah i tell you all i see is just fire that's what i'm seeing every spirit responsible for barrenness in anyone's life right now by the fire of the holy ghost i declare be delivered now be delivered now be delivered now by the anointing of the holy ghost overflow one i'm seeing three people I'm praying now I know because of time we can't let you come in but I'm seeing three people two are ladies one is a gentleman this prayer is for you there is an anointing as I'm speaking that is coming overflow one on people outside the Lord is bringing massive deliverance barrenness is a dangerous thing listen whatever you give a barren person is as well as wasting your time because it cannot grow it cannot multiply jesus saw the fig tree it was taken from the earth taken from the earth but it was not producing in the name of jesus i'm still praying that prayer again that any life here that satan has rendered barren i stand by the anointing of the holy ghost and i decree and declare be delivered right now deliver right now from every siege of barrenness be delivered right now be delivered right now from every siege of barrenness hallelujah Kemi who is Kemi Kemi um, I may not 
maybe I may just talk to one or two people. Kemi, you are wearing red. It's like it's a guy called Kemi. Who is that? You are wearing red. What's your name? Uh -uh, I didn't. I'm saying this is. I'm saying I know that Kemi is a lady's name. It's not a guy. I will pray for you. It's your hunger. This is. You are wearing red. What's your name? Your name is Kemi. Yes, sir. You are wearing red. I'll pray for you. But gentlemen, you are here. There is a hunger that you carry. Listen, you came from. Uh, I'm seeing Cross River. Where? Cross River. Cross River. Cross River. You yes, came. Sir. Yes, sir. The Lord is saying, I should tell you. Listen to me. Yes, you came because of a hunger. Yes, sir. To truly get an anointing. Yes, sir. But you see, this message I preach was for you. Yes, sir. You heard what I'm saying? Yes, this running around to want to do ministry by force is not the way it works. The Lord Himself, He will give you an anointing, but He will give you direction. What you need is an encounter with the word and direction, but you will never go back the same. Receive that anointing, a new dimension, a new season. My dear, there is a spirit of prophecy upon your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stir up that spirit, that dimension. I open you to a realm where you begin to see and hear the sounds of the spirit. In the name of Jesus, as I'm praying this, I'm seeing number 11, the same thing that came on this lady. The anointing of the spirit is looking for 11 people there is the spirit of prophecy where are they i stretch my hands right now 11 people 11 people scattered inside and outside in the name that is above all names receive that spirit you need it i stir it up from your spirit man i stir it up from your spirit man the grace for prophecy Makatos Kabarakata, sons and daughters stepping into dimensions of prophecy. Some of you, you have only had dreams, only dreams, but I shift you to dimensions of visions, prophetic visions. You will never be the same. I'm still praying this. I'm still praying this. There are people, this is your call. But no anointing has ever stirred it. In the name of Jesus, I shift you in the spirit into that anointing. The very anointing, the seat of the prophetic. I move you by grace. In the name of Jesus Christ, I activate it. I activate it. That dimension. I'm praying I don't know why God is moving this way there are people the call of God is upon your life but you don't know it you don't know that the call of God is upon your life but tonight as a token the Spirit of God is visiting you whether you know it or not Lord where are they I stretch my hands now if the hand and the mandate of God is upon your life for your destiny in the area of the fivefold, I declare, let the anointing of the Spirit locate you. As it locates you, the Lord begins to prepare you. Where are they? Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. hallelujah there is a dangerous spirit our time is up hold on but there is a spirit that i want to rebuke now i just saw written in the air rejection hold on many of you do not know the reason why good things never reach you you stand you are watching and an opportunity come rejection is not just a state it's a spirit lift your hands don't pray don't do anything just lift your hands hallelujah that's the instruction the lord is giving me just lift your hands just do what i'm asking you to do in the name of jesus many of you will be surprised now there are people it's like a yoke i'm seeing like cowries these cowries that they use that's what i'm seeing and in the name of jesus christ as the power of god is smashing that rubbish that's how many people who have been despised 
been despised the bible says where you have been forsaken so that no man passes through you it says you become an eternal excellency and a joy of many generations right now i stretch my hands from the front to the back overflow one two three the roadside and online if there is anyone here under the siege of the spirit of rejection right now in the name of jesus in this silence may the anointing of the spirit begin to bring deliverance right now i'm praying it's happening right now taking away that spirit from your life please be sensitive we are doing a quick walk rejection 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 by the anointing of the holy ghost rejection i command that spirit to leave i'm still praying i command that spirit to leave i command that spirit to leave alongside with this there are people bad luck good things must always turn to evil when it hold, when it enters your hand no matter what it is if they give you money something must go bad a good opportunity it must be destroyed you enter a relationship something must happen i stretch my hands right now in the name of jesus if there is anyone under the sound of my voice who is under this kind of siege here at this miracle service fire 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 i release the fire of the spirit right now from the front to the back inside outside I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. I command your deliverance right now. Keep your hands lifted and pray. Mighty things are happening in the spirit. I ask us to pray a prayer that the Lord put in my heart. Patterns. I'm still seeing it again. There are some of you, the same thing happens to every member of your family at certain seasons everything must happen either somebody dies or someone doesn't marry straight and correct you must have a child before you get married or something someone will rape you someone raped your mother someone will rape some kind of nonsense patterns in the name of jesus at the count of three i want you to shout jesus lord i pray that as your people shout that name every pattern that happened to the fathers that is about to replay itself in the life of your people let it be broken at the count of three one two three i declare those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now those patterns broken now hallelujah the spirit of delay god is taking delay from someone's life that's what i'm seeing god is taking delay i'm seeing it going delay 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 not everybody but i'm seeing god is it will surprise you after this miracle service the kind of speed that your life will enter delay hallelujah my dear come this come this is your first time here where are you coming from you're coming from abuja yes, i want to pray for you you had the prayer i just said we should pray yes. that prayer was was for you don't be embarrassed eh? there is a spirit of delay that must live your life you are a great lady but i see delay come it's a demonic spirit and if you are not delivered and you get up and go to abuja just like that it will be as if you did not come before the presence of God but I lay my hands upon your head and in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of delay I call you by name let this lady go now by the anointing of the Holy Spirit go now live her life forever in the name of Jesus that lady wearing lime cloth you this one come quickly please Look at me. Salvation has come to your family. The month of June. Look at me. The month of June, I'm prophesying by the Spirit, is the month for your family. The Lord is saying, I should tell you, He's changing everything. Everything completely by the Spirit of the living God. He's changing everything. 
by the spirit of the living God he's changing everything by the spirit of the living God I'm hearing a name Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris who is Doris I'm hearing a name Doris Doris are you Doris your name is Doris I'm going to pray for you your name too is Doris that's your baby I will pray for you look at me look at me shout Jesus My dear, look at me. Witchcraft. I'm stretched. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands in front of you. I stretch my hands and I declare. I'm seeing an altar catching fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. I declare it by the Spirit. I stretch my hands. That's what the Lord is saying I should do. I stretch my hands. It catches fire now. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Doris, look at me. Where are you coming from? From Congo. From Congo. Hold my hands. Say shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Is taken from my life. Is taken from my life. Forever. Forever. Say it again. Shame and reproach. Shame and reproach. Victory belongs to Jesus. Shame and reproach is taken from your life forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Shame and reproach is taken. Hold on, I'm not done with that. I decree and declare that shame and reproach is taken from your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody's father has not been paid for 11 years. I'm seeing I don't know what the condition is but I'm seeing at, at 11 years or so your father has not been paid it's something they have been pursuing please make sure you are honest who is that come your dad where is he Lagos. you too where is he do you believe that if I pray for you a miracle will happen Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we make it happen by the Spirit of the living God. I decree and declare that between now and the next 90 days, let there be a miracle. Let there be a miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. Why are you all coming? Your parents. No, don't. I, if, if I pray, most of you, it's not, it's not that word. You are just coming just because you want... It may be related in the name of Jesus. I'm, I'm just praying for you. As I'm touching you, you see, let me, let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You see this touch, you see. This touch, just this touch, you see. There is power in it. It's just that we are very carnal people. Do you understand? After service, you can hug me and jump on me. But now, what is on me is what makes this touch different. You see that? You can, you can have... It's not just a touch, maybe a touch for... Jamboree. No, 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 no. You can, I can lay my hands on you, right? And then something can come upon you. I can lay my hands upon you and then your life will change. Sometimes you see me just speak and you think it, as, as I pray like this, you see, watch your life and see what it becomes. Are, are you getting what I'm saying now? That's, that's, that's the point. The word of God that you can't see it does not mean it's not resting on you. When it rests on you like a hen over her, her, the eggs, it will stay there until there is a performance. This thing you see is not just power, it's authority. It's authority. There is authority in the spirit. It's not just, just sit down and we keep watching. 
I, be, the fact that you are here within this vicinity alone let me tell you whether you are inside or outside your life will never never be the same if i never get to touch you speak to you like this the word of god carries the anointing do you understand it's not just until maybe you, you make contact and lay hands and some of those things are just psychological it is the power of god hallelujah hallelujah i want to thank you for coming everyone hallelujah it's always a privilege i apologize for all the people who are having to stand i assure you this is not a waste not when you are doing it for his majesty may the lord cause the nations to stand before you because they will stand in awe hallelujah i rather stand before god than to stand begging and clamoring for the attention of men hallelujah thank you jesus i want to tell you something it is always a privilege always a privilege to bring the word of the lord to us I have never considered it as a right i didn't earn it this is an election of grace before i was born god has been blessing and raising people and if he tarries after we are gone there will still be the impact of the spirit look sit down anywhere you find if you can sit on stage and you won't feel embarrassed go ahead we're excellent people and we're organized but not too organized to rob people of entering their glorious destiny. Hallelujah. There is a longing that only you can feel. A raging tempest that only you can steal. My heart is thirsty, Lord, to know you as I'm known. Drink from the river that flows before your throne. Take me deeper, deeper in love with you. Jesus, hold me close to your embrace. Would you take me deeper, deeper than I've ever been before? I just want to love you more and more. How I long. That's my desire. That's my desire all the time. My desire is not to be a great preacher. I'm telling you. Being a great preacher does not heal the sick. It doesn't cast out devils. It doesn't change destinies. I desire to know him. I desire to know him with all my heart. There is an urgency in my spirit that is not bound to this realm nor anything this realm can offer. It is my singular pursuit. As far as I'm concerned, I have not begun ministry yet. This is only the preparation for an extraordinary life. I want to challenge you even as we start. Your desire for God must be genuine. Otherwise, you will be tired later on. Hallelujah. 
It's good to receive from God. It's good to receive. That's why we have miracle services where we trust the Spirit of God to release great things into the lives of men. But let me tell you, if your circumference of your pursuit for God is centered around the things you will get, your Christian experience will be poor. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Lord, we bless you. Tonight we'll be considering something. Please bring out your notebooks, whatever you have to write. I want to teach tonight on the walking knowledge of the word. The walking knowledge of the word. It's the Greek word epignosis. The walking knowledge of the word. Blessed be the name of the Lord. John 8. How many of you believe God is here? Those of us who are pastors and men of God or will be called into ministry, listen, let me give you a frank advice. If you have the best stage in the world and you have the best of media people, you wear the best of suits and you lack the presence of God, you are wasting God's time and the time of his people. Hallelujah. All of those things are only relevant if you can sustain the presence of God. Shalom, Shalom, Jerusalem. Peace be to you. When Messiah comes to take us home, May His praise be found in you. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Shalom, 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 Jerusalem. Lord, we will give you no rest until we become the Zion of our Lord experientially. John 8 I rather not have a ministry and have his presence I rather be considered a failure and have his presence when you have his presence you have everything learn this when you have his presence you will have every other thing. I cannot burn this enough into your spirit. Everybody listen. When you have his presence, you have everything. The presence of God is the end of every argument. The end of every contention. Let your presence never depart from this house, O God. Let it please you, Majesty, to make this place a tabernacle of your presence. You called it Koinonia. This is a place where we meet. Let this be the gates of heaven. Let nothing in this place turn into religion. Let it not be 
the simple quest of men to make meaning out of their lives. Lord, that you will find a place that you can tabernacle and build men and train men. Holy Spirit, you will find full expression in the midst of your people. Your presence. We covet greater weights of your presence. Greater than any revelation. Hmm. Greater than any anointing. The presence of the living God. presence of the living God. Lord, we honestly desire you. This is a true commitment from our hearts. On behalf of your people, Lord, we express a desperation. We want to see all of you manifest in our lives. We know that there is an extraordinary life destined for us in Christ. And we labor in the spirit to apprehend that which has been kept aforetime for us. So help us, O God, tonight as we advance in this sincere quest. It's a preparation for a fire and a revival that the earth has not seen. You brought everyone here by your predeterminate counsel. Teach us, great rabbi. We sit before your holy presence, break the bread of the Spirit and cause understanding to be crystallized upon us. May we not be men void of spiritual understanding. Strengthen our hearts out of the abundance of the deposit of spiritual things that you will put in us. Give us grace to be able to read the writings on the wall. That we may stand among the great and command power in this realm. We thank you because it is your great desire to do this. We yield ourselves to you, O Great One. Breathe upon us tonight. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. John 8. Verse 32. The working knowledge of the word. This is what I want to teach on tonight. Hallelujah. And you shall know the truth. And the truth that you know. Not that is available. The truth that you have, that you know. Will make you free. The word know the truth there is the Greek word epigenosko. Is the complete and accurate knowledge of anything that brings the person who is knowing and what is known into oneness. Hallelujah. And you shall know there will be an intercourse between you and the truth. And as a result, you will experience liberty. You will experience freedom. The limitations that and the encumbrances of life that keep you at the lower echelons of life will give room and you will celebrate freedom. It says you shall know the truth. Not that you will hear about the truth. You will know. It's one thing to hear it's another thing to know. Hallelujah. This realm is governed by knowledge. Write it. This realm is governed by knowledge. The degree of light that you have. Isaiah 61 verse 1. It says, Arise. Comma, shine. It says, for your light is come. Arise, shine. Not because you want to arise, 
Not because you, this is not an issue of desire here. It is the byproduct of the coming of your light. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. This is the prophecy, verse 2. It says, For darkness shall cover the earth, and deep, gross darkness. Darkness symbolizes confusion, ignorance. Gross darkness upon the people. It says, But the Lord will arise over you, and his glory shall be seen in you. Verse 3 as a result. It says, The Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of your rising. Gentiles, unbelievers, will be compelled by your light, the knowledge that you have. And even kings will come to the brightness of your rising. This realm, listen, listen, please. This realm is governed by knowledge. This realm is not governed by miracles. It's not governed by guesswork. As good as miracles are, the earth is not governed by miracles. A miracle is only necessary because there is a violation of a principle. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. The prophet began to lament. Speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He says, my people are destroyed. My people are destroyed. Because of lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. My people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. Listen. It says because you have rejected knowledge. I will also reject you from being a priest. That means it takes knowledge. Everybody say light. Everybody say light. Knowledge. This realm is governed by knowledge. That means the limitation that you have in life is the limitation of knowledge. For you will only arise to the degree to which your light comes. I'm convinced that where I am in life and the limitations in my life are the limitations of light. And so the remedy is to contend. The Bible says he made many lights. All of those many lights have their dimensions, but he made two great lights. Two great lights. And at the emergence of those lights, they silenced all those little lights. He says one to rule the day and the other to rule the night. I've said it and I've said it again and again, that if that light comes, you will rule both in the day and in the night. Hallelujah. So where you are today, seated looking at me, is where your realm of knowledge and understanding of spiritual things have kept you. I am convinced that no enemy and no devil can keep a man when his knowledge has lifted him higher. There are two ways to bind Satan. One is by prayer, the other is by knowledge. Your knowledge can make you live as if Satan does not exist. They know not, the Bible says, neither do they understand. They will grow up in darkness. And so the earth is out of course. But have I not said, ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. He said, but you shall die like men, men and fall like one of these princes. Psalm 82. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Are you there? Okay, Psalm 82. Can you give us Psalm 82? Let's just look at it from the Amplified. It's possible. Everybody say after me, I go for knowledge. I refuse to remain where I am. I go for knowledge. 
if you will believe this, this is a very powerful revelation. That where you are today is because of the limitation of your knowledge. From verse 4. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rescue them out of the hands of the wicked. Verse 5. The magistrates and judges know not. This is talking about you. You will understand that from the context of verse 1. It says, Neither will they understand. And as a result, they walk on it in darkness. What is the darkness there? Of complacent satisfaction. As a result, all the foundations of the earth, the fundamental principles upon which rest the administration of justice are shaking. Verse 6. This is God speaking to the great. He says, I have said ye are gods since you judge on my behalf as my representatives. Indeed, all of you are children of the Most High. The last verse. But you shall die as mere men and fall as one of these princes. Everybody say knowledge. Accurate knowledge. Working knowledge. Not theoretical knowledge. Epignosis talks of the working knowledge. Knowledge that can be applicable to bring you results. Many of us have all kinds of religious junks and theory that cannot stand the test of time. So many, listen, we, we live in a generation of rema and knowledge. There are people who can quote Genesis 1 to Revelation 22. We have a lot of theoretical knowledge about different aspects of the Christian faith. But none of this knowledge is potent enough to deliver to us the reality of what the word says will be. He says, ye search the scripture, for in them ye think ye will find life, and ye will not come to me. He said, the letter killeth, but the spirit quickeneth. That should be Psalms, I mean, John 6, 63, I think. John 6, 63. The words that I speak unto you, he says, it is the spirit who gives life. He is the life giver. The flesh conveys no benefit whatsoever. The words, the truths. That's why the Bible says, ye shall know the word. Ye shall know the truth. I have been speaking to you as spirit and life. Everybody say, I contend for knowledge. The walking knowledge of the truth. I began to edit my life some years ago. And I found out that I had many useless, though spiritual knowledge. Useless, though spiritual. Because I used it in the face of danger and it was helpless. So I knew that this was nonsense. If it is the word of God, it should carry in it the life of God to deliver results. Is that correct? And so I began, I made a resolution that I was not going to waste my time junking myself with religious knowledge that is not able to produce results in my life. There are people who have heaps of books in their houses. They've read everything. But knowledge that is vain. Let me show you something very powerful. Ecclesiastes, the last chapter, that should be chapter 12, from verse 10. Are you getting blessed? Please take seriously what I'm sharing. I'm trying to be as simple as possible so that everyone will receive. Ecclesiastes 12. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words. That which was written was upright and verse 11. It says, The words of the wise are as goats and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies which are given from one shepherd. Verse 12. Listen. It says, And further, by this my son be admonished, of making many books there is no end and much study is a weariness to the flesh now this is not saying you should not study you understand the context junking yourself with all kinds of knowledge that only makes you feel that you are making progress but you are not making any progress hallelujah 
They are weariness to the flesh. 13. He said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You can stop there. Could it be that the knowledge you have been having is only puffing you up, but it's not delivering results? That means there is need to convert your theoretical spiritual knowledge into the working knowledge. The working knowledge. I learned this from Bishop David Oyedeko. Remains my lifelong mentor in the area of wisdom. A man who has contacted the spirit of wisdom. Knowledge that can be applied. If you study glass technology and this glass is broken. And you carry it and throw it away. Of what good is your knowledge? Are you listening to me? Walking knowledge. Practical, applicable knowledge. There are many people who know almost all the scriptures. And demons come and oppress them and they are helpless. It means your knowledge is not applicable. It's not working. Hallelujah. Are you receiving something? And I want to challenge you tonight. And expose you to the principles that can help your knowledge become experiential. You can know that what you know can work for you. Listen, can I tell you something? There is a waiting process in faith. But the waiting time is not forever. The end of faith is a performance. This is what validates the waiting time. Thank you, Jesus. The first thing I want to talk about is the supremacy of God's word. Everybody write the supremacy of God's word. The supremacy of God's word. God's word in this realm is the final authority over the affairs of men. God's word is the final authority final authority when it comes to the affairs of men your experiences notwithstanding your experiences do not have the capacity to validate the word of god the word of god is that standard is that benchmark that all other things revolve around that means when your Christian experience is not tilting you towards the reality of the word of God, you can check and know that something is wrong with your life. There are many ministries that build their churches and their ministries around spiritual experiences. Never build your Christian life just around visions and dreams. You will get into a lot of demonic error. That's the problem with a lot of people. They are always seeing something every day. And they never consult the word. And so it leads them into blind error. They are like a pendulum. Swinging from left to right. Can I tell you something? Those who will last in these days. Are men who give priority to the word of God. Not men who have visions and dreams. I believe in spiritual experiences. But the realm of the spirit is such a complex realm. You must only look at it from the realm of God's word. To pick out that which is relevant to your destiny. Hallelujah. Right now, if you are seeing visions and someone is an ardent student of the word, that student feels very inferior. He feels me, I'm not seeing anything. And we brag about the things that we see and hear in the spirit. Do you not know that your experiences have not been tested, but the word of God has been tested seven times through every dispensation and it has been found to last. If you build your church upon the word of God, I don't care what men say, it will stand. If you build it upon visions and prophecies, get set, they will fall. If you build your miracle, there are many men of God who build their miracles around anointing. As good as that is, I feel very sorry for them. The word of God. The spirit and life of God. God is only commanded to go anywhere his word attracts him to.
Hallelujah. Are you learning something? The supremacy. When you come to a point where you realize that the word of God is the final authority. Everybody say final authority. Concerning any area. If it's your finance, the word of God is the final authority. If it's your well-being, the word of God is final authority. So if I tell you, you will not die. And you say, ah, the man of God has spoken to me that I will not die. That is wonderful. But can I tell you something? There is a more sure word of prophecy. That you find out in God's word. That I shall not die but live to declare. Any other prophetic word that comes only comes as a confirmation. Listen, my life is grounded upon solid. I thank God that I did not start my spiritual journey on visions and dreams. I started it upon the solid foundation of seeking the word. Hallelujah. There are many people who will not believe the word of God until a man of God stands and prophesies and speaks it to them. There are many people who cannot take the word of God and believe and say, look, this word guarantees certain things. Thank God for the gifts in the body. But do you know that the word of God is greater and bigger than any man of God? And that at the revelation of the true revelation of this word, you can open up any closed door. Koinonia is not running on guesswork. That's why we don't give ourselves heart attack for once. We are running upon the infallible, irrefutable, working, practical knowledge of God's word. Did you hear what I said? We are not working upon just a blind prophecy. Practical, irrefutable. The heavens and the earth will pass away, but the word of God abided forever. What is your life built upon right now? There are many of you, our lives are built upon shadows. The day the man of God who has become the anchor to your life is not around, you are dead. Our churches are full of gullible people who are just running. Oh, prophet, just tell me something. Just touch me, just touch me. And they don't know why. Now, I believe in these vessels. You will get something because they are anointed. But did you know that you are only established to the degree to which you have the working knowledge of God? If someone looks at me today and says that witches had a meeting that I would die, I'm not even going to pray about it. I tell you, I have too many important things. My 24 hours has been well sectioned. There is no space for frivolities. Hallelujah. This is why you find out that there are ministries that have a lot of crowd but no growth. No spiritual growth. Gullible beggars looking for men of God chasing after people everywhere that should be built and established in truth. It's God's desire. Shame on us if all we have in this place is a crowd of people sitting everywhere with little or no spiritual knowledge. This is why we dedicate only one Friday in the whole month. We sit under the word of God and feed you with truth that will build you so that you will now begin to command results and bring blessings to others. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is very powerful. There are all kinds of books that have been written about church growth, church planting, church principles, advancement. I've read some of those books and I'm sorry to tell you they are just junk. Those who wrote them do not even have a working knowledge. This book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate therein day and night that thou mayest observe to do all that is written therein. Then shall thou make your ways prosperous and you shall have good success. Everybody say the supremacy of God's word. The word of God reigns supreme over your life. Anybody that is leading you into any spiritual dimension outside God's word is a herbalist. Run! Don't pray! 
That's why before we begin ministering to you, we make sure that we show you the scriptural foundation upon which we do everything. And this is why he confirmed the words of his messengers. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Very important. You must have a working, practical, experiential knowledge of God's truth. If I ask you today, why will you be successful in life? What will be your answer? Hallelujah. I'm not going to ask you. But if I ask you, if someone asks you right now, say, sister, can you stand up? Don't worry, I won't ask you. Stand up. Oh yeah, now, stand up. If I ask this lovely lady now, and I say, why are you, are you going to be successful in life? That's the only one I'll ask. She said, definitely. But listen, did you know that success is not the issue of willpower? Forget about willpower has never brought anybody success it's not even a function of resolution when i see your investment in the word of god i can predict your future hallelujah i don't care what confessions you are making if i do not see you contending for the truth of god's word i know you are wasting your time and the time of others hallelujah say after me the word of god reigns supreme yes it must reign supreme that means the following number one your life must be compelled to live by the principles of the word your life must be compelled notice i use the word compel it says mortify your body this body is stubborn your life must be compelled to come under the governing influence of the world a believer is not just one who talks church things a believer is one who has submitted to the governing authority of the world that the word of god becomes your basis of judgment and decision Are you listening to me? Is someone learning something? So listen to me. Hold on. Now I want to open a shop. Hallelujah. The first thing is not to run and look for capital. The first thing is to run to the word of God. And find out what is the economic program that the word of God has earmarked for the success of the believer. If you are not doing that, I feel sorry for whatever you are doing. Hallelujah. You want to get married. The first thing is not to say, Kai, Pastor Jakes, I saw this beautiful girl. Mm -mm, leave that girl alone. Run to the word. The walking knowledge. Hallelujah. And then you begin to study. The Bible says, He that finds a wife finds a good thing, not a bad thing. And so you say, wow, there are many ways to get good things in life. One of it is marriage. That becomes your basis of joy. And then you now check. One can conquer a thousand. Two can conquer ten thousand. That means you expect acceleration and increase in your life. Listen, many people do not allow the word of God, the applicable knowledge. We have knowledge that we cannot use. We cannot try. He said, thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. He didn't say thy word is a book in my hands. Thy word is a lamp to my feet. That's guidance. And a light to my path. That's direction. The moment there is anything in life, the first thing, the first place to run to is the word. Search it out. Stay with the word until light breaks forth. People fast. They have no revelation of what they are doing. So it becomes a meaningless spiritual exercise. People do night vigils. They only do it because they are emulating those who have been successful. That's the reason why something can be blessing somebody else and be killing another person. The same thing. Lack of light. Hallelujah. I never do anything in my life because people are doing it. Never. 
People can be running. I'll just sit down and be looking at them. They say, won't you join? I say, me? Go where? Who is going to shorty my running? Who is going to take responsibility? For when God does not send you, he doesn't back you. I never do anything. That's why you notice that we don't do anything in this place except God directs us. And when God directs us, we are committed to it. Doggedly. What has been governing your life? What has been governing your life? For many of us, we do not have time for the word. We have time to discuss our problems with everybody. We have time to run around chewing from morning till night in the homes of prophets. And apostles and teachers and every kind of person. But we do not have time for the word. You just spend five minutes inspiring women or rhapsody of realities or every day with Jesus. Thank God for these resources. But you give your academics only that time and see if you will excel. What makes you believe? The clearest proof of love is the investment of time. Whatever you love, you will have time for it. That you do not love the word of God and spend time is a sign that is not a priority for you. Hallelujah. How amiable are your words, O Lord. They are my meditation day and night. You know, many of us do not understand the dynamics of how the written word will translate into making, improving the quality of your life. Predominantly because we have not been taught. Hallelujah. I spend a major portion of my life and time building upon the word. Because the word will give me what people are chasing after. The light breaks from the word. I sit under the word, scrolling from page to page, searching for spiritual principles and mysteries. My son, pay attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from thy heart, thy eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. He says they are life to those who find them and health to their flesh. Has the word of God become ultimate and final authority over your life? This is the question God is asking us. Many of us live as if we are not Christians. You live as if you are children of the devil. But when we come to church, we behave. Our decisions come from Nigerian films and advices from friends. The word of God is always the last resort for many people. When they've tried every other junk and it does not work. You meet somebody who is going through a predicament in his life and recommend scriptures and give the person, they'll go and throw it away. But tell the person, wake up by 12, stand at the right side of your house, wear only boxers, look at the sky for 10 minutes and say, I am free, I am free, I am free. They'll say, I like it, this is the kind of thing I like. Because we have not been taught the power of God's word. Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2. He says, and the spirit entered me when he spake unto me and set me upon my feet. Oh, that you will understand the glory. You will understand how organized your life will be. If you will give time to the word of God. Do you know how Satan makes us to run away from God's word? Distraction, distraction, distraction. Many of us are too busy and it's not God that gave you what is occupying you. It is your vain quest for ambition. I'm sorry for anybody who wants to ever be successful in life and will not first sit down with the word of God. The word of God will ease your journey in life. The word of God will guarantee your arrival. In a glorious destiny. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? The word of God. See, when the word of God becomes the basis of anything you do, your results are predictable.
koinonia will never be less than it is now. You know why? There is the working word that is granting us grace. Hallelujah. The supremacy. God is asking you a question tonight. You know, whenever I am saying these kinds of things, ladies think I'm taking them personal, but I, I need to hit you people very well because you are, you are the victims. Some of you are looking at me the way you are looking at me. This word is just jumping and passing. There are all kinds of soils. Why don't you settle with the word? One thing, matter, matter, you are concerned and upset about many things. Many of us believe that when you are connected to so 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 and so person, you will be prosperous. Let me tell you ahead of time, you are wasting your time. Because the greatest of any man is a man. Are you listening to me? Some of us are depending on the blessings of our, some of us are depending on our degrees. Some of us are depending on any, let me tell you, anything you are depending on that is not the word of God. Has already predicted your life. Doom. But happy are you when you find it. Happy are you when you find it. Right from the time. When there was nobody who would come around. The word of God already showed us a picture. Listen. Am I boring you? Are you receiving something? I'm challenging you because. See the cruelty of life can only be immune. You can only be immune to it by the revelation of the word of God that you have. There is a whiplash of poverty coming upon people in ways, in, in unprecedented dimensions that will turn Christians into beggars. But to you, to you who are within, who will take the word of God serious, you will find out that you are rising. Are you listening to me? I am convinced that no man can take my life. This is no longer a prayer point. It has become my conviction. And there are, there, there are a network of scriptures that have informed this ideology. It's not just because, do you know how many text messages people have sent to me? I saw you dying. I saw them shooting you. I say, let it remain from the realm of the dream there. Because it will never happen. You do not know how immune I am. He said, I will slay a nation for your sake. A nation. Not three armed robbers or four. A nation. Knowledge, 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 knowledge. Hallelujah. Knowledge. This becomes the basis of our authority and audacity in the spirit. I will never become a failure in life. No, see, this is not, I'm not confessing it to make me believe. I'm speaking forth out of the abundance of that which has been settled in my heart. You know why? It's not because Jesus is alive alone. I found the keys. Hiya. He said, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom. There are keys, brothers and sisters. If you catch it, you have caught it. The Lord is granting you keys. If you have caught it, you have caught it. I will never, till Jesus comes, taste poverty again. Forever. No, see, I'm sorry if I sound like I'm bragging. No, I have found it. I have found it. He said, I have found. Listen, listen, let me tell you something. He says, look unto Abraham your father. And to Sarah that bear thee. I called him alone and blessed him. Called him alone. So I decided to understudy the life of Abraham because the Bible tells me he's the biblical portrait of a blessed man. And the Bible says, And Abraham gave Melchizedek a tent. And he blessed Abraham. And he said, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High, possessor of the heavens and the earth. 
I found in the book of Malachi. It said, will a man rob God? Will a man rob God? The walking knowledge. I will never rob God of my time. Listen. God gives you 100%. And he says, give me 10% to prove that what the blessing I sent arrived to you. So that I can send another one. He said, bring ye all your tithes to my house. And prove me now, here with saith the Lord, if I will not, number one, open the windows of heaven. Number two, shower upon you a blessing that you will not have room enough to receive. Number three, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And it shall not destroy the fruit of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast its young before its time. He said, you shall be called blessed and you shall be a delightsome land. Luke 6, verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall men give unto your bosom. He said, for with the same measure you give, that is the measure you will be given. I found it. Second Corinthians 8, 9 says, Ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that although he was rich, yet for my sake he became poor, that I through his poverty might be rich. Second Corinthians 9, verse 8. The Bible begins to speak about God loving a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. And then I found in scripture, higher, he said the gift of a man the gift of a man makes room. The gift of a man. And I have the greatest gift in me, the Holy Ghost. That means forever, there will always be room for me. When you build your life around the confidence of the word of God, you become unbeatable. Hallelujah. Koinonia will always remain blessed. Because I found in Hebrews 7.7 7, It says, and without contradiction The lesser is blessed of the greater And without contradiction I found there the secret Hallelujah These are the principles that we are working with People will keep coming for koinonia in ways that defy explanation. You know why? The Bible says, if I be lifted up. So that's the key. If I be lifted up, not a man of God. He say, I, I, Paul can plant, Apollo can water, but increase is not given to any man. Hmm. Hallelujah. I found the secret of the anointing. This is not guesswork. Uh -uh. The secret of the anointing is not just impartation. Psalms 89. I have found my servant, David. When it comes to the things of the anointing, you must be a servant. This is the secret of revelation and power. Revelation chapter 1 verse 1. It says the revelation of Jesus Christ which is sent unto his servant John that he should show unto his servants the things that must happen. Joshua chapter 1 the Lord speaking to Joshua said Moses my servant is dead. He said and as I was with Moses so I will be with you. What is your life standing upon? What is your life standing upon? Hallelujah. What is your life standing upon? Luke 10, 19. Forever settles the issue of the devil. He says, Behold, I give you power to tread upon snakes, scorpions, and all the powers of the enemy and nothing. That's why I cast out devils and sleep like a baby. The devil that would distract me has not yet been manufactured in hell. I remember saying this years ago and somebody told me, you are making too much noise, so let the person see now. What is the framework of your confidence in the spirit? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Bible says, I fear no evil. Why? 
For thou. You see why we talk about the presence of God? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me. Not in the absence, but in the presence of my enemies. They need to be witnesses. You anoint my head with oil. And that anointing causes my cup to overflow. Hallelujah. I found the secret of commanding increase in any land. The Bible says, let the people praise thee. Oh God, let the people praise thee. And then the earth shall yield her increase. See, you are limited by your knowledge. Listen to me. You are limited. You are limited by your knowledge. If you will contend, many of us need to sit with the word of God and cry. We have a praying generation, which is great. But we have a wordless generation too. We have men and women who can pray for 12 hours, but they cannot sit with the word for 3 hours. And we have been made to believe that the moment you can pray and attack spiritual forces, they will go. You try it. This is why the prayer life of many people has no fire and it has no power. Because their prayer is, is not consistent with the word of God. Jesus spent 3 years doing a teaching ministry with his disciples after that he released them and they shook their world they sat under his feet for three solid years day and night i write these things to you oh excellent theophilus all that jesus began to do and teach all that jesus began to do your success can be predictable it can be consistent it can be stable hallelujah I listed all the areas in my life that I know will be relevant for my human existence. And I started supporting them with solid scriptures. There's no area of my life that I've left to chance. Hallelujah. Do you have a working knowledge of the truth? Have you found truth that you are running with? What are you running with? Many of us are running with luck and guesswork. How are you going to know that that is the job? Based on salary? Based on what? See, the life of many believers is, is too unpred, is too, is too slippery. We are not solid in our work. This is why we dwindle at anything whatever is happening everybody's running something else is happening everybody's running when will you gain stability in the spirit hallelujah we have a prosperous ministry forever because the bible says blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked these are the conditions so fruitfulness and productivity is not just dash there are conditions blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked nor stand in the way of sinners nor sit in the seat of scoffers he said but his delight is in the law of the lord and on that lord doth he meditate day and night what is the result he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yield its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither and then it says whatsoever he doeth prospers whatsoever he doeth prospers whatsoever he doeth prospers Everybody say the word is final authority over my life. See, 
Some of you want increase. You want joy. You want grace. But you are obviously working against your own success. Because you are working against the world. Many of you, are, you want prosperity. But you are so greedy. There are some battles Satan cannot fight. The only way Satan can fight your harvest is to fight your seed time. I see a lot of people who want to be rich. You get angry when you see rich people. You get angry when you see blessed people. As though they are being blessed stopped you from achieving your own. When you see a blessed man who is blessed by kingdom principles, look at his giving life. The Bible says, as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and winter, or cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Proverbs 3 from verse 9 and 10, he said, Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruit of all thine increase. He says, So shall thy bands be filled with plenty and thy vats to overflowing. Many of you are greedy and selfish and self-centered. That's why you will never get the blessings of the Lord. It doesn't matter how many miracle services you attend. Don't be offended. I'm teaching you the principle that will help you. Hallelujah. Do not envy a giver. He cannot help his situation. He will remain blessed. Hallelujah. As a ministry, we do not owe God one naira. By the grace of God. As soon as the offerings are collected, before anything is done with the money, I'm sharing these principles with you because I want it to work in your life. 10% of it is taken on to God. We can't stop being blessed. It doesn't matter what your personal feeling is about it. Hallelujah. You can be anointed and keep growing in the anointing. Are you listening to me? There are many people who can be anointed and full of fire. And then one day you find out that they are no longer anointed. No. That's anointing that came as a result of impartation. Without knowledge to back it. I can lay hands on you and you begin to do supernatural things. But your lack of knowledge will mislead you. So it must be supported by knowledge. Shikaparatakosupanadaba. Say after me, I contend for knowledge. Say, I contend for knowledge. I don't see limits in my life. This is not because I read a motivational book. I found out in God's word that if thou canst believe, all things are possible, not to a Christian, to him that believes. If thou canst believe. That's the only barrier. If thou canst believe. The Bible says when they shall say there is a casting down. For us our story is different. We will say there is a lifting up. I believe this. I believe this. Hallelujah. Psalms 128 says. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord. It says, his seed shall be mighty upon the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. And all of that, he begins to speak. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. The fear of the Lord. That means the fear of the Lord has a lot of blessings. If you do not fear the Lord, why will you want his blessings? See, this is what people like David Oyedeko and other people call the covenant. They call it the covenant because once you play your part, God is committed to his part. Hallelujah. I found in life that when you solve people's problems, you become blessed forever. This is the secret of generational impact and influence. Many people think money makes a ministry. Impact brings blessings. 
when you bless people they are too grateful to leave you the way they met you hallelujah the bible says the fire upon the altar shall not go down that's why we will not stop praying that's why I won't stop fasting. And then shall thy light break as the morning. Access to unlimited insight and illumination of the spirit. Now that you know these things, do you live by it? Do you practice it? Can I tell you something? Many of you have, have been accusing God. But sit down this night and you will know God is fair. You are the one who has been killing yourself. Is that true? Many of you know that. No. Look, God is just. He told Cain. He said, if you do like your brother, will he not be accepted? That's what he told Cain. Cain was angry that his brother's sacrifice was accepted. I was watching Dunamis TV. And I saw Paul and Encher's wife. He was not around. And she was ministering in their healing and deliverance service. And I just sat down. I said, no, God, you are just. There is no partiality in you at all. If I do what that man is getting, I will get his result. Full stop. Period. Rather than criticizing people, especially for those of you who, in your small campus fellowship or this and that, you are already used to talk. Why don't you find out what they are doing? This, you see, let me tell you something. I say this with all humility. Don't misunderstand me. We have this ugly pride in the body of Christ. Huh? That we are all equal. Now, I believe we are equal. Listen, we are equal in Christ. But we are not equal in knowledge. We are not equal in grace. There are some people that have been given authority by reason of certain things. Doing business with the spirit in deep waters. The church of God has this ugly, arrogant way. When I see a man that carries something I don't have, I sit down. I don't come to him and say we are colleagues. Uh -uh. I sit down. When I'm listening to Oyedeko or any of this man of God, if you come, if you distract me, I will, I will drive you away. Because I'm receiving. Hallelujah. I wanted to know the secret of wealth because I knew it was going to be necessary because of the kind of life and ministry God is giving. And I didn't want to live this false life of begging people from left, right and center. I found out from scripture that God sent me to be a blessing to you, not a burden. I can't yoke you with my responsibilities. It's good to go and meet the one who called me. And so I went and met God. Do you know what? God told me he's not going to teach me anything. I should find vessels. That's where I found that scripture. He said, look unto Abraham, your father. In other words, God said, there are people who are commanding results in this area. Search for them. Be humble enough to sit under their feet and learn. And I said, fine. Got their materials, got their books. Sat down with an open heart and light broke from my spirit. Hallelujah. The word of God. I remember one time I was I was praying and I, I, I slept off and I had a dream. In the dream, Bishop Oyedeko was sitting down and I came. And from my wallet, I took some money and I was dropping at his feet. When I took that money and I was dropping at his feet, he looked at me. He said, there's still some in the wallet. I should bring out everything. I brought out everything and I dropped it. And then he brought out a carton just out of a drawer. It was full of all kinds of currencies, mint. And he looked at me and the Holy Ghost spoke to me expressly. He said, the keys of prosperity that I gave Bishop Oyedeko, I have given it unto you. My life is a product of encounters that are a derivative of the word. Follow them. This is what I found in the word. Who through faith and patience have obtained the promise. Hallelujah. 
So what do you need? Knowledge. Knowledge, my brothers and sisters. Knowledge. Knowledge. Could it be that that's what you need to live where you are to the next level? He told the woman, 2 Kings 4, he said, what do you have in your house? Listen to what she said. She said, a little. This was her, this was her problem. It was not the oil. The cruise holding the oil was little, so it could not do much for her. And the prophet told her what her solution is. He said, if you increase capacity, the oil will increase. Knowledge. Where I am today. Oh, if you see the way I cry before God. What you see today is our mindset of yesterday. Wait and see what God is doing with us today. I tell you, there is, there is, there is, and there is a wave that is coming. Indescribable. Because of the infallible word of God. I can stake my life at this word unto death. Fathers have gone before us. They took this same scripture who through faith subdued nations. They shut the mouths of lions. People did great things. A man of God went to Lagos. The first time he went to Lagos, he slept under the bridge. But right now the world is celebrating that man. He's called Archbishop Sam Amaga. This world turned ordinary. Listen, listen to me. This word took ordinary people. Hiya. Show me what you are doing with this word and let me tell you what your future will be. I don't need to be a prophet. Just show me. Let me see the value you are placing on this word. I can tell you what your tomorrow will be like. I respect the word. I don't just believe it. I submit to the governing authority of the word. I love the word. I love the word. Hear me tonight. I'm giving you a big key. Epignosis. I will find out the working knowledge concerning my finances. The working knowledge concerning success in ministry. The working knowledge concerning intimacy with the Holy Spirit. The working knowledge concerning miracles, signs and wonders. The working knowledge concerning church growth. The working knowledge concerning generational impact. The working knowledge concerning leadership. I found my way out of every nonsense in life. It's only a matter of time. I found my way. I found my way. Not when the word of God is here for me. Not when the Holy Ghost. I found my way. I'm telling you. Every factor notwithstanding. This is how you can rejoice in the Lord. He said, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say, rejoice. Say after me, I'm blessed. Let me tell you how you are blessed. You're not just blessed because a man of God saw that you marry a rich man. You are blessed because the gift of God's word has been given unto you. And the Holy Spirit. The word of God has not gained supremacy in the life of God. How many of us tonight can look at yourself and in all sincerity say, I'm living by the word. If you are living by the word, you will pack out of that guy's house because the Bible says, do not be deceived. Bad company corrupts good morals. That you are in his house, you are not married, you are sitting comfortably, you are violating the word. Don't think you will get the same result. See, people, let me tell you, the mercy of God does not override his justice. Hallelujah. You can't be smoking and drinking, roaming around and giving God 10 minutes and there is somebody laboring in the spirit. You think you will get the same result? No, sir. Straight to the point. Let me just tell you, it won't happen that way. Hallelujah. There are some of you in relationships with an unbeliever. This guy does not love God. What does the Bible say? He said, do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. He said, what fellowship has righteousness got to do with lawlessness? And what communion has light got to do with darkness? You know it, but it has not become a working knowledge. You have not submitted to the influence of that word. Are you listening to me? It is the word that you know. He said, ye shall know the truth. 
and the truth shall make you free. When you grow in character, when you grow in grace, the Bible says grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge. It takes knowledge for grace to be multiplied. And the more your knowledge, the more your peace. He said grace and peace, shalom, be multiplied unto you. The supremacy of God's word. The second thing I want to touch on quickly and then we'll pray. Is the renewal of the mind. The principle of renewal. Please write it. When the Lord asked me to share this, I was very excited. Because somebody needs to hear it. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Who is like you, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Mountains bow down, every ocean roars to the Lord of lords. Praise Adonai From the rising of the sun To the end of every day Praise Adonai All the nations of the earth All the angels and the saints Sing praise he says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Look at me. Look at me. Those of you in business and entrepreneurial things, those of you who are called into that area and have read business books, there is the fundamental law. In fact, in ancient times, they hid this law from people and they call it the law of attraction. Hallelujah. This is a business law. It really does not apply to us in that context, but I, I'm just saying that to teach you something. Some of the wealthiest people in the world believe that it is this singular law that has brought them this. The law of attraction. Praise the Lord. And the law of attraction says that every man is a living magnet. That you attract to your life the things that are consistent with your most dominant thoughts. Hallelujah. Listen. Very powerful. So every time a nation wanted to conquer another nation, what happened? They kept creating through the media the things that will make them think failure and defeat. When they find out that they've taught failure so much, the army will go and conquer them. It worked like magic. This was the principle Adolf Hitler used to conquer. This was a principle that the Roman Empire used. I've done an extensive research on it. The law of attraction. But the, the, the danger of the law of attraction is they do not give credit to God. They give credit to the earth. They believe that the earth is a living entity and it can read people's thoughts. That there are magnetic waves that leave you through your thoughts and it has an attracting power. Science students, this is what Isaac Newton tried to study that he called the universal law of gravitation. Remember? That's what he was trying. He was trying to show the union between two different bodies. The earth and any other body. That there is an attraction between them. So people called it the law of attraction. So that means, according to them, that everything, this is what gave birth to this principle of visualizing. You see that? They say visualize. Do this and that. You know? visualize um see yourself successful see yourself great see yourself this and that and that and that that's why the rich people have certain ideologies let me tell you where they took it from that's why i took you to that scripture proverbs 23 hallelujah it says for as he what god equates a man's thoughts with his life are you seeing it there he says for as he thinks where that is how he will become. I'm teaching you a powerful principle. Ah, so my thoughts. Run with me, Genesis 11. Let's look at it quickly. We are going to pray. 
I want to show you how powerful this principle are. That, that your most dominant thought have already started living before they manifest. Genesis 11. Verse 2. Let's just start from verse 2. And it came to pass, this was the rebuilding of the Tower of Babel. Listen please. It came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain land of Shina and they dwelt there. Verse 3. And they said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They had bricks for stone and they had asal for mortar. Verse 4. And they said, Come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower whose top will reach the heaven. Listen, Nimrod was creating an imagination in them. He was telling them, This is what we are going to do. Let's occupy ourselves with these thoughts. Are you listening to me? I want to show you something powerful about the renewal of the mind. And let us make a name for ourselves, lest we be scattered abroad over the face of the earth. Verse 5. But the Lord came down. Listen. So, this was their imagination. Is that true? The Bible says the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. Stop. Had they built it? Look at what God is saying. Is it in your Bible? It says, let us see what the men had. They are finished building it. This is from God's perspective. Look at it now. Is it not on the stage? They said, let us start. The Bible says God came to look and say, these guys have finished this thing. As a man thinketh in his heart. This is a powerful principle. Listen. If, if you catch this, you will change your life and destiny. It says, let us see what the sons of men had built. Ha! Question. They've not started. This was the board meeting to discuss. But what did God see in the realm of the spirit? This is what the business people call the law of attraction. That your thoughts are living to a point when it crystallizes not even the devil can stop it let's finish up hmm. and the lord said listen indeed the people are one and they have all one language listen he said and this is what they begin to do uh-uh stop i thought he said you have already built it is that true follow me help me now koinonia now he's saying this is what they begin to do. Ah. He just saw from the realm of the spirit that they are finished. But they were about to start it in the physical. He says, now nothing that they have proposed to do will what? Was Satan mentioned in this equation? Even God testified. He said, if we don't stop these people, they will do it. How did God stop it? Seven. Verse 7. Come now. This is God. Oh. Let us go there and confuse their language. This was. God said look. The only remedy is to break this unity. Give them divided languages. Divided thoughts. So it is a language that creates thoughts. Are you following me now? I'm trying to establish something. Help me, believers. God did not say, let's go and change their mind. He said, let's just change their language. When their language changes, their minds will change. And this building will crumble from the spirit. I show you a mystery. You will live an unbeatable life. Let us change their language. Romans 12. I'm excited. May somebody catch something tonight, oh God. God wants you to change your situation. May somebody catch something tonight. Verse 1. I beseech thee, therefore, brethren, listen. When it comes to renewal, Paul is beseeching brethren by them. He said, this is too important. I have to beg you. That you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Verse 2. It says, do not be patterned 
The word world here is the Greek word aeon. The thinking pattern that comes with this age. The thinking pattern. It says do not be conformed to the thing. That means there is a thought process that this world brings. And if you stay like that, you will never be successful. Are you listening to me? You see the reason why many people are failures? Before you are born, there is a system that has been organized. And the media is helping it. You don't know. Listen. One day I'm going to teach you something called the conspiracy of the rich. And you will see how a lot of people and our media is keeping us where we are. You see how the message of poverty helps you to attract all this nonsense to your life. We think it is a good teaching. The Bible says, as a man thinking. So the Bible says, since your thoughts is the same, words are what crystallize into your thoughts. Is that correct? For time's sake, we may not, we may not read it, but let me, let me just quote it quickly. Hebrews 11 from verse 1, the Bible says, now faith, verse 1 to 3 actually. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen listen he said that for by it the elders obtained a good report verse 3 says through faith we understand through faith that the world's okay we have it here listen the world was framed by what okay so we see the word here but how did it happen so that the things which were not seen there was something in the mind of God. I'll never be a failure in life. Never. 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 See, don't just get emotional about this. I found my place. I did a teaching years ago called the law of atmosphere. I create only the atmosphere that allows the things of heaven to find expression so you are dropping blue films in your house you are dropping cigarettes and wondering why demons are, are oppressing you are you seeing that many of us laugh you think it's nice you don't find me using vulgar words oh it's not for people like us we are no 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 i'm guarding my heart that's the next scripture quickly Proverbs 4 verse 23. Say, guard your heart with all diligence. Seeing then that your heart is such a vital point in your destiny. The Bible says for us, one to read. Read it is projected. One to read. We're going to pray. Keep your heart. Listen. The word there is create a garrison around it. The way you fence it. Create a garrison. Protect your heart. Don't let anybody come and pollute your heart with nonsense. That's how they are killing your life. When you come to my place, there is a protocol. You don't speak anyhow. I will walk you out. Hallelujah. You see why the Bible says, remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. What does it mean to consider? Brood on it. Think about it. Many of us are experts at thinking about yesterday. Oh, if only I did this. And they warned me. Now that it has happened, come. Forgetting the things that are behind, I press on towards the mark of the high calling. Everybody say the renewal of the mind. So I take the word of God, which is an ideology, and I begin to change my mindset. Everybody say, change my mindset. Yes, yes, yes. That's what begins to happen to you. So they gave birth to you in a house. Yes, it was, it was just firewood that they were gathering. You've been carrying that mindset. Suddenly you begin to find in God's word that there is a greater life. There is a better place for you in Christ. Your mind begins to wrestle it. People tell you you are good for nothing. Then you keep finding another testimony. But whose report will you believe? I choose to take the word of God. The entrance of thy word. Give it light. The entrance, not the reading. The entrance. The entrance, not the reading. 
and understanding unto the simple. Day and night I meditate on what the Bible has said about me. And I believe it. I'm above principalities and powers. I am convinced about this. I am above. I am above. Completely above. I am blessed. I am prosperous. My heart is already totally committed to God. There is no backsliding. It's not part of the testimony of my life. It won't happen. No. I walk circumspectly. I walk by the wisdom of the spirit. Am I challenging somebody? Epignosis. The walking up applicable knowledge of the truth that you can apply in your life and you receive results what situation are you in right now do you know that if you take the word of god you can create a glorious destiny many of you are waiting for nigeria to change your destiny let me tell you ahead of time there is a root shock waiting we are the ones who are coming to change them Lift up your Bible if you have one. Say, this is the word of God. I believe it. I am convinced that it is not a lie. That it is truth. It is able to give me a new mindset. A new ideology. A new thought life. That will translate into a glorious destiny. I declare that I believe nothing that is not consistent with the word. I obey nothing that is not consistent with the word. Say, I live the word. I talk the word. I believe the word. I act the word. I think the word. When this becomes your life, he said they are life to those who find them. I'll never break down and just run and you will not come and see me on Friday. You say why? I say ah there's something wrong. No. See. The word has become my new eyes. I have put the word in my eyes. It has, I am blind to any other thing that is not the word. Can you see the solution, not the sickness? Can you see the breakthrough, not the limitation? Do you see yourself rising? Listen, this is powerful. It's the principle of renewal. Sister, do you see yourself marrying? Or you are just sitting down and camping around your dream and saying in the dream, I saw a wedding, my husband was there, I was not there. Change it! Amazing the things we allow to govern our lives. Casting down every yetzah, every imagination. I cast them down. Because if I don't cast them down, they will become my reality. I refuse. I am not poor. I may have taken Gary. I refuse to meditate upon that. I'm well favored. This is what the constitution of the kingdom tells me. I'm above only. It says my path is as a shining light. It shines brighter. I don't care even if my life is nose diving. As far as I'm concerned, I'm shining brighter. I have the spirit of faith. There's no unfruitfulness in my life. There's no barrenness in my life. I have the spirit of faith. I'm convinced about its reality. I remain anointed forever. No devil, no Jezebel can take it down. It came by revelation. It is sustained by revelation. Hallelujah. Koinonia keeps moving from glory to glory. Because the Bible says, Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever is born of God. Whatsoever. Epignosis. If you find yourself doubting the word of God at any point, you truly did not believe it. Are you listening to me? That's the proof. There are many people that only believe God's word based on the result it shows. If it does not seem to show any result, you start looking for alternatives. It means you did not believe it. Look at me. When a woman fails to give birth, does she run to go and cross check if she's a man? 
Why? She settled that there is something wrong. But to ask whether she's a woman or not is not an issue. Hallelujah. When a man is important, does he run to the hospital and say, Doctor, verify, paradventure. I'm a winner. I'm a champion. Thank God I don't need another man's confession to build my life. It's entirely up to me and God. So this excludes my enemies out of the equation of my success. I'm happy about this. He said, unto thee, O Lord, do I lift up my soul. He said, oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. Rise up on your feet. Begin to pray in one minute. Shakata parekete balaka posataya. Come on, pray in tongues in one minute. Mande praskata pekata prakoso patataba. Whose report will you believe? Jembria takata libosa. If thy eye be single, thy body will be full of light. If thy eye be single, as a man thinketh in his heart, so will his reality become. Come on, pray in one minute. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Can I tell you something? The believer is a mystery to creation. The believer is a mystery. If you don't believe this, you will die and watch others rise. And it will not be God's fault. This is why you are hearing it. Prayer point number one. We are going to pray. Listen. You are going to say, Lord, I submit my life. To the authority of your word. Listen. Some of you tonight. May God break that stubborn heart. That will not bend to the word. Some of you as, as small as you are. You are so stubborn. You won't bend to the word. You know what the Bible says. And there is grace already released to you. Take advantage of it. Stay with the word. Build yourself upon the word. Stay with the word. Run away from anything that is not of God. It, anything that is not of God is reprogramming your mind to failure. Lift your voice and say, Lord, I submit to your word. I submit to your word. Let him that steal, steal no more. I live by your values uncompromising by your values your word created the heavens and the earth I'm giving you a key that will make you blessed that will make you powerful that will give you grace for generational impact heaven and earth shall pass away but my word shall not pass away. My word shall not fail. Cry unto God. Cry unto God. Your word governs my life. Your word governs my conversation. I submit. I submit. I submit. Hallelujah. Prayer point number two. Listen. The Bible says, As a man thinketh, what have you been allowing? What words have you been allowing to shape your mind? You listen to all kinds of corrupt and ungodly music. The problem is, they are mind builders. They control your thoughts. 
Alléluia. Listen. Make a determination today that all the gates into your heart, your eyes, your ears, that you are going to culture them to make sure they only receive things that will minister life. It's a decision. It's a resolve. People will misunderstand you. But they can't stop your greatness. Hallelujah. Don't listen to any kind of thing. Don't take yourself to places that will cause you to begin to think evil. Take the word of God. Take the word of God like a drug. When you are sick, they tell you take two in the morning. Two in the Take it like that. You are going to pray right now. Listen. The Bible says, casting down every imagination. You are going to speak against anything that has informed your thoughts. You know mindsets you have that are not consistent. You are going to challenge them right now with the word of God. Lift your voice and pray. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I refuse to be a failure. I'm not a non-entity. No, no. I'm relevant in God's program. The grace of God is at work in my life. I can't die of that terminal disease. I can't die with that genotype. No. Lift your voice and pray. I don't believe that fibroid is a false report. I don't believe that tumor, that growth, it will die in my body. It will die in my body. No sickness can thrive in my body. No weakness. I am strong. Strong. Alive. Mentally alert. I refuse the curse of poverty. I am the blessed of the Lord. Empowered to succeed. The wisdom of God is at work in my life. The favor of God is at work in my life. I refuse any report that is not of God. I refuse it. I challenge it. I challenge it. I challenge it. Report from the media. Report from my past failures. I challenge it. Make sure you are praying. Shake it, go, it, go, I'm the head and not the tail, above and not beneath, I prosper. I'm growing in revelation, growing in insight, growing in power. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bear yourselves into to hold somebody. Just two minutes, we are going to pray. Make it three. Make it three, please. Hallelujah. Now you're going to pray. Speak the word of faith into that person's life. Every truth you know that can set men free about their life, their finances, go ahead and prophesy it. Speak it. Shake it. The blessed of the Lord. The blessed of the Lord. Anointed to excel. You won't die young. All the numbers of your days you will fulfill. The hand of the Lord is upon you. Your path is as a shining light. Shines brighter, brighter, brighter. You are renewed in knowledge. You have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of He that has created him. Tell the person, I bless you. I bless you. I bless you with wisdom. I bless you with favor. I bless you. Grace be multiplied to you tonight. I bless you. Let your hands be strong. Let fear banish from your life. Your God is not dead. 
Your God is not dead. Your God is not dead. Your God is alive. But I know whom I have believed. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. I'm persuaded. Take your eyes off the limits. Take your eyes off the challenges. Take your eyes off the failure. I'm blessed. I think greatness. I think favor. I think intimacy. I think about God, His ways, His life. His word is my guarantee. His word is my guarantee. God cannot lie. 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 lie. Let every man be a liar. Let God be true. Hallelujah. Tell them in the name of Jesus. I'm anointed. I'm blessed. I'm highly favored. The grace of God is at work in my life. My words carry power. My mind is renewed by the word of God. My path is as a just, the path of the just. Shining brighter and brighter. There's no failure in my life. I refuse setback. I have authority over devils, over sickness, over failure. I'm not weak. I'm not beggarly. I'm the strong. Well, I'm not finished. I'm only thinking of what to tell you. Let's continue. I can do all things through Christ, through the anointing that strengthens me. I'm above only, not beneath. When men say there is a casting down, I say there is a lifting up. The favor of God is upon my life. The glory of God is upon my life. I have no covenant with death. I have no covenant with death. I choose life. I choose life. I choose life. 